Now, if you want to get in touch with us, you can um, WhatsApp us here. 87 180 is the number, or use the hashtag OTBAM. It's time for The Beef Is Real. Well, I don't like them. And I don't have to work with people I don't like. Patrick Vera is six foot four. So I'm going to go Gary Neville. He says, come and have a go at me. You should have gone to Specsavers, Charlie. Well, maybe you should go also then, Jeff, because uh, you couldn't see driving home the other night. Don't you ever talk about me! So I think that your arguments back and forward there, Tony. That's the point. I'm wondering... We, just let me finish. Let me finish. I'm let you finish. You will cast the at all. You can forget about Sean Kavanagh as far as he's a man. If, if you're going to be critical, then you've got to make sure you've got something to back it up with, don't you? Maybe the coaches were maybe panicking a little bit. To me, you've got to have a, a little bit of a better record than that. The beef is real. <laughs> the beef is real. Right. Uh, we're bringing this back. We're starting it anew. This is the first time ever this has actually properly been thought out on, I have to say. I mean, we've talked about it for a long time. Uh, but finally, there is a beef that is worthy of its own sting and the start of a new series, right? This is as seismic as beef has ever been. Good. Whether you like it rare, medium rare, well done, it doesn't matter how you like it. Still moving. This beef is delicious. No matter what way you take it, no matter what guise it is, if it's burger, if you're getting stuck into it with a fork and knife, it doesn't matter. This is the, the juiciest beef you're ever going to get. So, well, do you, do you want to pick up the story from yesterday? Because this is quite something. This is a narrative that exploded that I don't think too many people would have expected. I had never seen a Clive Tilsey video on the internet ever until the weekend when he told a brilliant story about Jack Charlton and really caught the zeitgeist about Jack as an after-dinner speaker and Jack as a man. And he talked, and I was like, that's really interesting, Clive Tilsey doing videos. Turns out two or three weeks ago, he was relieved of his duties as the lead commentator at ITV, and he was building up to, it. that was the, the, that was the um, Carpaccio, this is the fillet steak for main course. Have a look at this yesterday. If you haven't seen the announcement, I am being replaced as ITV senior football commentator. Quite a few people have been in touch with me asking me to react, to comment. Um, I'm not sure that would be a very good idea at the moment. I was told about three weeks ago, so I have had some time to get my head around the decision, but I haven't got my head around it. Uh, to be clear, this is ITV's decision, not mine. And I'm upset, annoyed, um, baffled. I, I would have been interested with commentating the Euro 2020 final for them less than 48 hours ago, but now you know, I won't be commentating on any of the big England games in the coming year, and I'm going to miss them. I love this job. So that's the first 30 seconds of a two and minutes and 25 seconds. Is it? How long is it? It's two minutes and 16 seconds. How many views, Owen? How many views? 5.9 million views. And that's just on his. People have ripped it and pretended that they're uploading it natively to their own accounts. That's just on his own. 5.9 million times that video has been watched. Like that it is. The video is really the, the veg on the side. The, the beef is the thing that has given this veg all its flavor and all those views. So five seconds into this video, Clive Tilsley says that a few people have been in touch with him to comment. And he says it would not be wise for him to comment at the moment and then continues to speak for another two minutes and 11 seconds, uh, essentially commenting on the, everything that's happened to him at ITV. He did forget to tag Sky Sports in the tweet is, is one thing I would say. And I've got a huge admiration for how Clive Tilsley actually manages to commentate his everyday life. Referring to himself, he says, I'm a lucky boy as if he's just escaped a red card offence by just getting a yellow card, is how he talks about himself. Uh, I'm well able, I'm available, he says. It is a come and get me plea. On its own, before we get into the beef, this is an incredible moment. I think that is like, ge genius, right? It, like, it's, it's just something so unusual. It's, it's not something we, we would ever see. There, there is... Uh, a certain the marketing campaign. To, it's a it's, the decision it's, to do this. Yeah, yeah. It's one of the best marketing campaigns you're ever going to see. I like I I, I saw Kieran Cunningham on Twitter going, "What the hell was this?" And initially, that was my reaction too. And then, as it takes off, you realise suddenly, suddenly his value has exploded. Because when Sky or BT or whoever sign him, it becomes this like massive self fulfilling story that everybody just writes about because it's got 5.9 million views. No one, no one thought they cared about this. Really? It's true. Like, no and one really thought, and they probably don't, but it turns out, you know? 
and he's also really, really good at what he does. So it's not, it wouldn't be a stupid decision from Sky Sports to take him on the back of the fact that he's got 5 million views. But there isn't everybody who's going to generate that sort of conversation. But so and, Sorry, just very briefly. Andy Lee always makes the point that if there's four sports happening in a town square, the fight in the corner is the one that everybody goes over to and watches, just for, at least for the start, to see what's going to happen here. Everything else, like, you know, you can have whoever. But if you've got a fight going on over in the corner, everybody's just going to have a look at this, make sure I don't miss anything. And that's what's happened. Mm. Yeah, it really is. So ye yesterday, Clyde Tilsley, you, you know the BBC video with uh, Professor Rob Kelly, is this the guy who's talking about South Korea and his kid bursts into the room to interrupt the BBC interview? Clyde Tilsley is the professor talking about South Korea and Richard Keyes is the kid bursting into the room to make this thing go absolutely nuts. Richard Keyes' blog, by the way, is... Quite a thing to behold. Uh, 24 hours before posting this blog post, he had written another one about Newcastle's takeover and mentioned bombing the shit out of Yemen. Uh, and crazy, like, like really uh, incredible reading in Richard Keyes' blog ordinarily. But this is just on uh, a level above this entirely because not only does he address Clive Tilsley, he starts to open this can of worms that I didn't even realise was a can of worms up until yesterday, I did not realize that there were a load of things that were left to be unsaid in the Richard Keyes and Sky Sports story. But in incredible Richard Keyes fashion, he has made the Clive Tilsley getting shoved by ITV story a Richard Keyes story, which you have to say is in itself a genius move. We are watching two of the most genius marketeers in the world right now talking about themselves. This is now become a situation where you look at uh, the, the Richard Keyes at Sky Sports situation and wrongly you were like stroking your chin going, is there more than meets the eye here? Is this a situation where it's like the unwritten Game of Thrones book that we've been waiting for for years and years and years where Richard Keyes is eventually going to pen what happened at Sky Sports? And this has been an incredible theme that Richard Keyes has, has got stuck into over the last couple of years. We will get into the blog in just a moment, but I, I just want to play a, a piece of audio from a few years ago. Uh, it's from the video when he appeared, I think, with Des Kelly on BT Sport. And uh, he talks about uh, Sian Massey, the, uh, the, the, the third official on the day, and the offside law and the, the, the sexist remarks being made in the Sky Sports studio. His justification of this and his uh, attempts to shroud everything in mystery is actually worth some applause, I think. Have a look at this. Big call on half-time, which she got right. When I rang her and spoke to her on the Sunday, uh, I cannot tell you the relief that she was still feeling that she got it right. And she said to me, thank you for not showing the other one, because she got one horribly wrong. And we made the decision we wouldn't show it, because mm -hmm. it wasn't fair. Um, well, she also said to me, please, it was just banter. And I said, I know that, Sean. I know that. And you know, she said, I expected it last week at Sunderland. It's just a little bit of fun. I said, I know, but there are other people now who have decided it's not, and it's out of hand, so I need to apologise. There's so much of the minutiae I, I would love to get in with you, but we, we'd be here all night. We've got time, I'll tell no, you. No, we, we haven't. Trust me. <laughs> we, if it's interesting, we, we haven't. Otherwise, um, do you have any regrets? None. I regret much ab about what happened around and about us, but I don't... I, I, listen, how, how, how did a... How did a conversation from a studio, recorded on a mobile phone, find its way to the mail on Sunday? Now, you tell me. Again, I'd rather not right now. No. Because <laughs> I've told you and you know, and I know too, but that's not for now. It was just banter. It was actually uh, her words to me, not, not, not my words to her. It's funny how she said the thing that you said. Isn't that, isn't that and the attribution in that. It, it, we weren't like there, the we didn't hear the conversation, did we? No, the, the only thing BT Sport failed to do on that night was every time Richard Keyes cast further aspersions on his dismissal from Sky Sports, it should have been like a, a quick zoom on Richard Keyes as he was going like this to say, well, did uh, I actually get sacked or did somebody push me? Did somebody actually leak the thing to uh, the Daily Mail uh, or was I sacked legitimately? This is the, the card he's been playing for quite some time and he gave us a whole deck of them yesterday. So I don't know how we want to do this. I'm, I've got a Mount Rushmore of lines from Richard Keyes' blog yesterday because I think this is the only way to do it justice. Even this, this is like the Dublin Mount Rushmore. Even the 
lines that don't make it are still worth reading because they're so good. But for me, this is the, the top four. So first couple of paragraphs, a little bit of sympathy for Clive here, a little bit of, you know, kind of feel sorry for your plight, blah, 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 blah. But then it becomes about Richard very quickly. Try leaving a company for good, he says, watching them drip feed nonsense into the media and then calling your prospective employee to a meeting to threaten them with financial penalties if they continued with their plans to employ you. We thought we buried them. We don't want this, three senior Sky executives told the commercial manager of TalkSport, someone to a meeting at Gillette Corner. Oh, there's so much more. But that is for another time. Oof. Hey, well, like, he's the biggest tease in the world. Oof. Go on, what's next? What, what, is, what is this? The, se the second head I'm on Rushmore is about Clive, actually, not about uh, at Richard Keyes. Or not about... Uh, it is not about Richard Keyes, actually. He was better than anything, he says, of Clive. National Radio had at the time. He was better than anything National Radio had at the time, and he knew it. Although it didn't help that he told the bosses at the BBC that his grandmother was a better commentator than they had. And this was a job interview. He returned from London to a Birkenhead pub for drinks with me and Bob Paisley. He never applied to Radio Sport again. There is a lot going on there. I'm not sure how happy Clive Tilsey would be about the line about his grandmother actually being made public. Clive is a nice guy, he says. This is line number three. He's deeply thoughtful and he cares. He cares about so many people and he's always the first to show if he's got a problem. Although I haven't heard anything from him these past five years. <coughs> I don't know why. Shrug emoji. That's how I know ITV's decision will have cut him to the core. But it isn't terminal, Clive. It isn't over. Far from it. There's something so Machiavellian about even the way Richard Keyes punctuates his blog. It's, it's incredible poetry, really, and it's right on brand. The final line, I digress. It's not the end of the world, Clive, although I know how it feels right now. It's the end of an era. Sam is a good call. Enjoy it, mate. Oh, watch out, Martin. Exclamation mark, exclamation mark, exclamation mark, exclamation mark. Bringing a third party into the debate here. Martin Tyler, get ready to get shoved by Clive Tilsley. Yeah, I mean, ultimately, that's where this is going to end up, right? A big money move across town, and everybody goes, oh, that was like a little interesting diversion when, when there was a global pandemic on, and we might have, um, you know, had a lesser attention span than... Although, I don't know, maybe this story would have been a massive celebrity story six months ago before the pandemic. Who knows? Like, it seems people are actually genuinely interested in this stuff. Uh, is that it? Is that the end of the beef is real? Yeah, I, I think that this is a big story no matter when it happens. If this happens in, in the middle of a World Cup, it's a big story. This is, a, this is as big as sports stories get, really. Yeah. The, the beef is, um, is tripartite. It's ITV versus Clive Tilsey, and then somewhere sitting in the middle of all this, uh, pretending to be a marionette, is uh, Richard Keyes. So check out Richard Keyes' blog is essentially your advice, and uh, have it, on, have it uh, ready to go anytime. 087-9180-180 is the number here if you want to get in touch by WhatsApp. The brand-new OTB Sports app is available for download right now. And a reminder that OTB AM is live in association with Gillette. We don't just play the game, we change it. Gillette made of what matters. We've got a brilliant interview with actor Anson Boone coming up after nine this morning, but up next, it's the 30th county on our tour around the country as Antrim get the Met Rushmore treatment. We're back with Neil McManus, Kieran Barr and Stephen Ferris after this. OTB AM.